Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, good to be with you today. We're in verse 12 of Ezra chapter 3. If you have your Bibles, Ezra chapter 3, verse 12. I'm going to read this and uh, make some comments, and then we'll go ahead and pray together. The Bible says, But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the fathers' houses, old Father's houses, old men who had seen the first house, the house that Solomon built, wept with a loud voice when they saw the foundation of the house being laid, though many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not distinguish, check this out, so the people could not distinguish the sound of joyful shout from the sound of people's weeping. For the people shouted with a great shout, and the sound was heard far away. So, um, they pressed through the delay and disarray. And remember, listen, remember, any time that you are willing to lay your life down and do the will of God and God speaks to you and there's a great work, remember every time that that happens, there's, there's going to be there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be difficulty for you to press through. Um, it's going to be important for you to not go into any endeavor of faith with rose-colored lenses thinking that it's all going to be, you know, just dandy, a bed of roses, because serving God comes with a lot of adversity. And that adversity not only transforms and changes your life and forms and shapes your character so that you bear the image of Jesus, but it also provides an opportunity for God to work miracles, right? Because when the circumstances around us become impossible, that's when we press into God and pray and we're able to experience the miraculous power of God working in our lives. They've pressed through the, like I said, the delay and the disarray. The foundation has been laid, um, but now the next obstacle they're confronted with is discontent, is discontent. And so this moment where it's like, hey, you know, we've traveled hundreds of miles and God has done a work. We've been in exile. We've laid the foundation. Everyone's going to be excited. The response, the expected response across the board you would think would be elation and joy. And yet there are a group with, there is a group within the group that is discontent. Um, it's the old, it's the old crew, right? It's the old crew that has seen what God did in the building of Solomon's temple. They saw that with their own eyes. They saw the magnificence and the, the grandeur and the just display and they're comparing it to what God is doing through Zerubbabel. And while there's a whole mass of people that are filled with elation, there's a group that is weeping. And they're weeping so loud that you can't distinguish between the joy and the crying. I mean, that man, if that, if that doesn't sometimes describe uh, people's responses to the work of God. You know, I think it was Mark Twain who said, he said that comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. When you start comparing uh, yourself to other people, the work of God in your life to the work of God in others' life, um, or you're the person that's doing that to somebody else, you know, you can take a moment that God has intended to be a moment of praise, a moment of joy, a a wage of joy for a person, and you can steal that away because you're the one who is living with discontent instead of contentment. You're the one who is living with um, unmet expectations instead of recognizing what it is that God has done in the moment. And if you're leading through this, I'll just tell you right now, if you're leading through this and you're being faithful to God and the calling of God on your life, and on the one hand, you've got all these people that are, that are giving God glory for what he's doing, and then on the other hand, you've got a group of people who are just like unhappy with everything and, and discontent. I'm not talking about people who are like being helpful in giving you the other side of things to make you wise and aware because as leaders, we need to hear 
the good things and the challenging things. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who are living in comparison. I'm talking about people who, you know, every silver lining has a gray cloud. I'm talking about people who are so self-centered and self-oriented, they don't even see the good work that God is doing, and they're more than happy to bring everyone down to their level so they're just as miserable as they are. I'm talking about that group of people, and I will tell you that five of those people, five of those people can be loud, louder than 500 of the other people. You can have 500 people thanking God for every good thing that he's doing, and then you can have five people who are just discontent and posting on social media and and, and, you know, unhappy with this and that. And, and as a leader, sometimes, you know, you can be so sensitive to those things that that, that that small group, that small group of discontent people can impact you so greatly that you yourself no longer even see the good things that God is doing. When you're in that place, you have to choose who you're going to listen to. You have to choose who you're going to listen to. You have to choose the voices that you are going to allow into your life. Um, you are going to have to make a distinction between the voice of those who, you know, in many cases will never be happy. They'll never be satisfied. You'll, you'll never be able to meet their needs. They'll always be discontent about something. Um, you, you're going to need to be able to recognize the reality of that um, and minister to it appropriately, right? I mean, we never have the right just to react in the flesh or, or, or be rude to people, but you, you, know, you have to set up a boundary to that so that you can be paying attention and giving glory to God for what he has done because that voice of con discontent can pull you away from what God wants to do in your life. And if you're not careful, it can be a, the very thing that makes you not want to step forward in faith and be obedient to the Lord. So choose today who you're gonna listen to. And I would encourage you not only to listen to the voice that is responding with joy to all that God is doing, but, but be that voice. If you're that voice of discontent and for you, every silver lining has a gray cloud and you're more than happy to make everyone else as miserable as you are, look in love, let me just say, repent of that. Repent of that. Get in line and start reinforcing those who are living by faith and sacri sacrificially following Christ to fulfill his mission. Father, thank you so much for your word today. And I just pray that you would help all of us to be able to see the good things that you do and to be that voice of joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.